Hi everyone, uh, this is Ms. Schneider, Chief Strategist of MarketGage.com. A little follow-up to yesterday's video of today's January 30th. Now that we've seen Microsoft, Google earnings come out, uh, and of course ahead of the Fed announcement tomorrow. So what's so interesting is that if we're looking at Microsoft here, and I'm using these charts today, my four, char four chart screen, because you can see the last price where on some of the more stay at uh, charts you cannot. And of course, it closed the 408.59, even after a beat on EPS uh, uh, we, we, and, and REVs, we actually are down now, uh, about a percent, not too bad. But uh, let's take a look at some of the signs and so you would know how to play it for tomorrow. And I think the most interesting chart, considering tomorrow is the end of the month, is this monthly chart. And I'm just going to show it to you real quick because this Bollinger Band is very often key to whether or not we're going to get a continue upside or not. I mean, clearly you can see you were close to overboard anyway. But this comes in at 482. So I guess the easiest and simplest way to say is that if by the end of the day tomorrow, or we maintain a hold over this 482, then we are breaking out of the Bollinger Band. We did it la uh, two months ago, then we had an inside month, and then we do it again. It does seem likely that we would continue to the upside, again with that measurement of around 485, uh, based on looking at the monthly chart from the top to the bottom and the breakout over 350. Now, of course, on the daily chart, if we cannot hold that 400, and I think that's really the number you have to look at, you also have to be aware of the fact that the momentum already started to decline going into the earnings, and the price momentum, which was matched when the price was much lower here, or at around 378, 380, is exactly where the momentum is now while we're trading at 408, although 405, or even 404, it's going down as I'm talking to you. So that 400 level I was just telling you about on the Bollinger Band is also significant here, as you can see, on the 10-day moving average. And on that 10-day moving average, if that breaks, not only does it look like we may have some kind of a vicious reversal, but in NASDAQ as well. But then we'd be looking at the next level would be 394, which is the six month calendar range. And then we could possibly be looking again, lower still at around 384. And then lower than that, probably we'd start thinking buy opportunity if this got anywhere near 365. Now, of course, on the flip side, if the earnings turn out by tomorrow morning not to be a bad event, but a better event, then I would be looking at the high of the day before. 409.98, so over 410, I think that would mean that basically we are still bullish and you could be a buyer. Under that, under today's low, which is uh, 406.45, considering we're there right now, we gap lower, uh, I would follow those gap lower rules and uh, consider it to be uh, at least a sale down to 400 and we can reassess from there. So Google's even worse shape because that, and after hours now, is down 5.71%. And using that same philosophy about that Bollinger Band on the monthly chart, considering tomorrow is the last day of the month, that 149.69 becomes the pivotal point. If we close the month below that, then I think not only does it mean we're going to have a correction more in the growth stocks and the MAG7, uh, but also uh, possibly trickling down to the rest of the market, considering how much of this was influential in keeping the market afloat. And so that's what I would be looking for there, that 149.69, let's call it 150. Meanwhile, as I'm speaking to you, you can see that in the aftermarket, it's down at 144.77. So let's take a look at that area on the daily chart. Now, what was so interesting about Google is, again, even though it broke out and made new highs yesterday, Today, it actually traded really with inside yesterday's range. So considering it's now gapping below, we can consider that a reversal top if it doesn't take out the highs of 153.78. So under 151, and of course that 150 that I just showed you on the monthly chart, we could be looking at about a 10% correction which from here would be about a $15 correction. So a $15 correction from here would put this down at around 140, 138. And that's an interesting place to look because as you can see right now, it's where the 50-day moving average is. So that would be the ultimate support. But remember, for tomorrow, the low here is pivotal. 150 is even more pivotal. 
and considering it's trading at 144.49, gives you 10-day moving average at 148, and it looks like it's going to maybe break everything, including the six-month calendar range high at 145. So in the nearest term, if we come in under that 145, 37, figure, uh, well, it's actually all over the place. Let's see what the exact number is. The exact number is 145.22. We come in under 145.22. I think you have to be looking for that move. Like I said, we could see that 10% move in one day around that 139 level. And if we come in above 145, I think we have to then look at the 10-day moving average at 148 and, of course, 150 being absolutely key for tomorrow. Looking at the silver price, um, don't know if this will be impacted necessarily by what happened with Google and, and Microsoft and NASDAQ if it starts to come down. But I would say, if anything, it could be more bullish for silver because it would then send a signal, no matter what the Fed says tomorrow, that the Fed is actually going eventually have to cut the rates to prevent a recession. Because even though the earnings and the uh, EPS, the REVs and the EPS were good in both companies, there's also a lot of layoffs going on. And it could be that, again, those prices got well ahead of itself and the earnings weren't quite as spectacular as the street would have liked. So that means potential lower rates for the Fed, trying to avoid some kind of talk of recession. And if that's the case, we know that could be very friendly for silver. Keep your eye on the dollar as well. So right now, looking at this silver chart right here, I really like the idea of, A, first of all, we've got a very big pivotal area here at 23, figure 23 to 2303. That really has to hold. But we closed higher than that. So your next pivotal area is up around here between 2315 and 2317. So that's your most immediate area. Above that, you have to be bullish. Below that, maybe we have to go back down to 2287. But assuming we come in above 2315 to 2317, then of course we start looking at the area where it stopped today and also where it stopped uh, a few days ago. And that level would be 2341. And of course through 2341 with the power of these lows, and this little formation here, we would have to be taking a next look then at 2370 with a 50-day moving average. And that golden cross I told you about yesterday is so interesting to me, even though the slope has come off. But we clear that 2378. We're looking at 24. And over 24, I think silver can really fly. OK, looking at the gold chart right now, we had a nice gap up today in the gold futes. Also a big pop in momentum. So after the mean reversion, we get this nice pop sitting right on the 200. Now the 200 is still above the 50, where in the price the 50 is above the 200. But this was also an unconfirmed move to a bullish phase. And so it just could be that the momentum, all it's telling us is that we really haven't had any. And if the price gets going, that momentum will catch up very quickly. So in terms of pivotal areas for tomorrow, first of all, with this gap up, not only is it, of course, but geopolitical, but after we just looked at the poor earnings, it's also very possible that this is anticipating that the Fed will be more dovish, or at least have to be more dovish. We don't know. But what we do know in terms of levels is 2047 delays low has to hold. If it doesn't, we'd be looking probably at filling a gap down to about 2037. And of course, if we break that, we're back to looking at that pivotal 2020. If we hold that 2047, today's high was 2068, the high here was 2067, and the high here was 2071. So between 2068, 2071, that's the resistance we get through. We get through that resistance, of course, then we're looking up at these levels right here. The high on this day was 2083. And then finally, our last high before we saw the sell-off after that big, big day this day was right here at 2098. So at that point, we're looking at 2100. And of course, you all know if we get through 2100 and it's the end of the month, you never know. That would be the highest closing month we've ever had in gold. And that certainly couldn't be bearish. In the oil market, we were at some point today over $78 a barrel. But it wound up closing today at 77.81. And of course, you can see right here where the 200-day moving average is coming in at 77.56. So let's give it a little bit of room since it's been up and down that 200-day and say over 77.40, 77 
we have to have a bullish bias. Clearly, we want to get back over that 200 for a second day and confirm this phase change to accumulation. Then the next area, if we can get through there, would be really clearing, I think, more up in this level right here at 78.30, even though we were higher than that a couple of days ago. And of course, we get through 78.30. Now we're really looking back at that $80 barrel. On the flip side, if we wind up opening below these levels right here, let's call that 77.30. Where was that lumber? 77.30 right here, a very pivotal point. We close below that or we open below that, I should say. Then I would say we'd have to be looking at some support here at around 76.80. And then we break down under there. I think we can go and test the low that we had today, which was, let's give you a more accurate number, um, 75.83. So between 75.83 and 76.50, that could be a chop zone above 76.50. Of course, we're looking at a move here um, uh, to hold and a move over 77.36 to take out the 77.54. And then, of course, through 78, we're looking back at 80. I'm not going to spend much time on natural gas just to tell you that it did hold at least yesterday's low, but it did not give us a proper reversal pattern because it did not close above yesterday's high, which was 213.7. Today's close was 212.9. So this means nothing to me. <clears throat> the only way I would get interested in natural gas now probably would be if the momentum continues to flip up, gets back through the 200, back through the Bollinger Band, and we're talking mean reversion. Okay, that's it for now. Good luck tomorrow on Fed Day. Hope that gave you good information on the earnings reports and how to look at the gold and the silver market in particular tomorrow along with oil. Thanks so much. Bye for now.